Orbact is a European territorial cooperation uh, program that enables cities to work together to develop new and sustainable solutions to major urban uh, challenges through networking, sharing knowledge and building capacity for uh, urban practitioners. Here in Kuala Lumpur, as we saw in these days, there are many uh, practitioners from all over the world, many activists, many people who are driving the change in their local communities. Now we go to South America, we go to Lima with Mariana Alegre Scorza, who is the director of Lima Como Vamos, who promoted uh, uh, very interesting schemes of uh, urban participation, which is at the core of Urbact as well. well did you start and what are the main actions that you uh, promoted in, uh, in Lima? Uh, well, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, and have the chance to talk our, about our experience. And uh, well, the Lima Como Vamos is a model that we replicate from Colombia, actually, from Bogota. And uh, it has the uh, objective of actually um, gathering all the data and all the information, either public or private, put it together and uh, organize it so we can actually give it to the policy uh, makers and the decision makers and also to the pub, uh, public knowledge and to the uh, uh, through the media um, with that information we actually um, follow how the public policies on urban issues are uh, going on uh, if we ha are having uh, setbacks or if we are having improvements in different areas such as transportation public spaces education health and uh, housing for naming a few and we Within that, um, we have a spin-off project which is called Ocupa Tu Calle, or in English it will say Occupy Your Street, uh, that uh, aims to um, re recover uh, public spaces uh, or even creating in, in spaces in non-existent places to uh, give it back to people and to actually enjoy the city from the human scale. So Can you mention some examples of the activities that you did with Ocupa Tu Calle? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, well, we have... Uh, uh, almost three years working in the project it started like uh, uh, only like an um, like one uh, a small project in in the midst of the uh, conference of, of climate change in 2014 uh, that was held in Lima and in that uh, moment uh, we were thinking of not only talking about sustainable cities, but actually living sustainable cities. And we tried to convince the Ministry of Environment that uh, in, instead of, of investing in like big billboards uh, showing messages about the climate change problem, we should maybe invest the money in small little spaces through all over the, the city. Uh, well, they have already signed the contract for the billboards and we only have got the chance to, do, to make one small space in one uh, district in Lima. And it was such a success that uh, it helped us launch our program. And uh, three years later, we have 23 public spaces uh, in Lima. Some of them have become permanent and incorporated in the public policies of the different local governments. And other ones are aimed to be more like pop-up spaces or temporal spaces, but still having like impact in, the, in how the people um, react within their own uh, public space and within each other, which is also one of our key objectives to actually build a community uh, towards the, the, these spaces. Um, and what, what I think is quite uh, challenging is actually to put it and move forward from the actual uh, transformation of the public space to public policies that are going to be lasting. But what I found really interesting of your experience was the way you involved the residents in these actions, but also private actors mm -hmm. who were involved in and supporting the creation of these uh, new temporary public spaces that then became also uh, permanent in, in some areas of the city. Uh, which is the method that you followed and uh, do you think that this method can be replicable in other areas of the world? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, we are now working with uh, UN Habitat in a toolkit for Latin American experiences and to how to put this type of methodologies, which, of course, we are not the only ones doing this in Latin America. We have been doing our cities by our own hands forever. And um, with this in mind, we actually focus a lot on how to involve a uh, community. Uh, we are not... Uh, are, we're not successful on getting them in all the processes that we make. Uh, it's part of all the learning and the, and, and, and the experience process. But we do organize our methodology in like five steps. First of all, we um, uh, take one uh, potential space and then we analyze it in between, in, in not only the physical but also the social and all the other aspects that are going to be important in the process. Then we... Um, 
uh, uh, with this we uh, propose a, a solution uh, trying to get together all the proposals and all the interests and desires of the people that are, are getting involved in, in the process. Uh, with that information, we validate the, the results and the design with not only the community, but also with the local leaders and the public officers and, and who, the other persons and actors involved in, in, in the area. Um, then we actually implement the space uh, using mostly uh, rec reclaimed wood and, and materials that are garbage for some um, uh, industries, but for us are like the, set up, the materials to set up the spaces. And um, using the information that we recover in the first step, then we make like these uh, measurements and impact um, data uh, to, to actually see how good or not good was the process. And uh, then we, we, we make it like in two, in two moments, uh, one immediately after we uh, set up the space and another measurement we, are, we, we made it a little bit uh, further in time so we can actually make changes and improve what maybe are some design problems or something that is not working, which is quite an ability uh, and, and a great characteristic of this cheap spaces as we are making them not permanent and and with this um, mobility we are able to fail and it's not costly so we can also correct it and, and adapt it to what the real needs uh, of the people are in the moment so so uh, what are the other great urban challenges that Lima is living right now you know that the traffic the urban sprawl are uh, incredible challenges but uh, uh, compared also to these challenges how are you contributed in your small business to solve it mm. Well, that's a good question. Uh, Lima main problem, uh, even though the symptoms are the traffic jams and the uh, inequality that you can see all through the city and, and the absence of social housing, is that actually we are not keen, or the city and the city leaders are not keen in actually planning. Uh, and and not, 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 not with this idea of only plan for making a plan, but al actually to have a roadmap to actually have uh, steps by steps and, and, and objective driven and vision driven uh, um, uh, actions. So without that, uh, the city is, uh, is, is being left to wh whoever, uh, whatever, whoever wants. Uh, and this makes a lot of conflicts, uh, particularly between uh, the most powerful and the less powerful. And within that, um, our contribution, uh, uh, even though we are a small uh, organization, but we do have the, uh, a really good support from different uh, big uh, actors in, 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 the, in the city. One of, of them is a, a big media. Uh, so we are able to put some topics on the public agenda to discuss and to actually start talking about some uh, transformations between the cities. Um, uh, with, with that, uh, we also try to, in, in this particular case of the Copa Tucaye project, to um, scale up the process that we're making, but act by, by actually incorporating in the public policies of the local government we're working with. So we are most like a seed project, and we start making the pilots and making like one, two, three, maybe four uh, uh, process within, within the jurisdiction, but then we expect that the governments will take the process and learn from it, and then decide it to actually invest money and allocate time and, and people to, to the process. In these days here in Kuala Lumpur we are strongly supporting the idea that cities are already implementing the new urban agenda mm -hmm. yeah, even though national urban policies are not always so strong in many countries. Uh, do you think that uh, cities in South America can bring an original contribution of what kind to the, uh, to the global debate of, uh, about the implementation of the new urban agenda? Uh, absolutely. I think that maybe one of the key points of the Latin America context is like the uh, ability of being resilient uh, and, and actually the ability to also uh, um, try to uh, resolve some problems even though they do not have the resources or even though they do not have even sometimes the, the capacity or the uh, tools to actually make it like with a big budget and with a big uh, process. So. Uh, uh, citizens of, of Latin America are, have always been doing their cities by, 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 by their own and, and I think we are growing towards uh, a phase where it's more of um, 
um, con collaboration between the areas. And in particular, in the case of Peru, we are also go entering like a, what I call the urban generation. So, so actually, finally, citizens will be more informed and more empowered to actually demand for better uh, public services or for the idea of a public uh, space or, or, or a, a city as a public good uh, and to actually start Uh, preservating uh, this idea of the city for all that we are all expecting and of course that is why one of the objectives of the new urban agenda. And I'm sure that the implementation of the new urban agenda will be in the next few years an important boost to national and local governments to pursue incredible urban strategies and integrated plans for the urban development of our cities. Thank you so much and if you want to know more about Urbat, always the www.urbat.eu but also our Facebook page and our Twitter page. Bye!